the van coover canucks are you kidding me three wins in a row for the first time this season and it's all thanks to bruce boudreau thatcher demko my goodness what a clutch performance from that man and uh elias Pettersson, just who seems to be lacking confidence decides to put on the damn dangles are you kidding me to do that in a shootout when you're low on confidence when when shorty before is like hey maybe you should just walk in with a clapper from the hash marks he goes in he pulls up the peter forsberg are you kidding me i i don't even know where to begin i guess we'll go from the top folks we're gonna break this game down as we always do we're gonna talk about um my pluses my minuses your thoughts and uh folks this is a three game winning streak uh, don't look now, but are the Canucks on a little bit of a win streak here? What does that What does that take them to? Is that like 12 wins on the season now? Is that 11? I don't know. But either way, the Vancouver Canucks are climbing the standings. Their 11th win of the season, which still isn't great. But hey, if the Canucks were going to get back in it, they needed a, a streak of wins. And they go out, they take down the LA Kings, the Boston Bruins, and the Winnipeg Jets all in a row, two clutch shootout wins thanks to Thatcher Demko, who goes five for five in the last two games. And uh, I mean, let's let's break this let's break this down. Uh, let's go for it. So first period, Thatcher Demko, uh, and it's Comrie and Net for the Jets. And this is the second time against the Jets. The Canucks have gotten kind of lucky, and they've gone against Comrie instead of Hellebuck both times back to backs for the Jets and. Canucks now 2-0 against the Winnipeg Jets this year, a team that they have never been able to beat, really, in Rogers Arena. They've done it twice, uh, and you uh, you can't argue with those results. Hey, the Canucks strike first in this game. It's Quinn Hughes firing a pass up to Horvat, who, uh, as they're entering the zone, Hoaglander's the trailing man. He plays it over to Niels Hoaglander, and a filthy little dangle makes a move to the backhand, and a, the backhander from, like, the hash marks, he just roofs it. This is a gorgeous goal, a gorgeous goal from Niels Hoaglander. Uh, bravo. His sixth of the season. He was on a bit of a slump for a while, but he's got his sixth right now. Um, then JT Miller goes into the penalty box for the first time in the game. First penalty of the game uh, took down Wheeler. And then it's JT or it's JT. It's Blake Wheeler who gets the opening goal. Uh, the entire left side of the net was open. Uh, this is a bad goal. Demko's going to want this one back. Uh, Wheeler basically from the point kind of. Uh, has takes a look and the entire left side of the net is open as Demko sort of cheating to the one side trying to see what's going on and he fires into the open net and we're tied at one a power play goal for the Jets uh, against the league worst Vancouver Canucks power play but or penalty kill the Vancouver Canucks Thatcher Demko makes up for it just moments later Blake Wheeler looking for his second of the night second of the season I might add this should be an easy goal for Blake Wheeler nine times out of ten he scores this Thatcher Demko sliding to his left, throws the glove up, snags it, and basically makes up for that previous goal, right? In theory, that one should have gone in. The first one shouldn't have. Either way, they score one, uh, and we're all good there. And then with 30 seconds left, absolute mayhem breaks out. Tyler Myers with a terrible pass in the offensive zone. It is a clear giveaway, and it is a clear-cut breakaway for Blake Wheeler on his third chance of the game to score a goal. And Thatcher Demko makes a huge save here. And then Kyle Connor on the rebound gets a great A chance. That's also stopped. And the Canucks send it the other way. And Niels Hoaglander gets a softie, a wrister from the basically the top of the zone on the left-hand side. And it hits Comrie right in the big, uh, the big glove pad thing here. You know, you got your hand part of the glove and there's the big wrist pad that's kind of big and bulky. Uh, it hits that, pops up, falls into the net. Comrie can't get it. And the Canucks are up 2-1 going in to the first intermission. Shots in the first period, 14 to 12 for Winnipeg. But hey, the Canucks are uh, the Canucks are on top and the Canucks have a chance to make it three straight. We go to the second period. Uh, Elias Pettersson tries the classic clapper, the one that he did against Detroit in his rookie season. He walks into the zone, he fires a clapper and hits the crossbar. Again, he is an inch off, folks. He's an inch off from just running up the score here. Um, then the Jets would tie it up about six minutes in and it's Alex chase on who completely loses Kyle Connor. He beats him. He goes to the puck and he drives the net taps in a quick pass and it's tied at two. So feeling a little stressed here, right? I mean, you know, the Canucks have had lead twice. They've given up the lead twice. What are they going to do to answer back? Does this team have the pushback 
to go back out and gain that lead back, and they do. It's Connor Garland getting a stretch pass, getting a breakaway. He fakes the backhand. He goes to the forehand. He leaves Eric Comrie in another zip code and just taps it into the wide open net, and it's 3-2 for the Canucks. And then it's tied again, like four minutes later. It's Kyle Connor. Uh, Kyle Connor with an excellent play. He just makes a nice move around the net, has everyone looking at him. And then you look to the other side of the ice, and Mark Shifley's just standing there all by himself, fires a one-timer past Demko, and it's 3-3. Um, the second period was was kind of a mess, too, because the defense just fell apart after this for the Canucks. Uh, there was a Hughes giveaway where then Luke Shen lost his man, and then the rebound goes to Andrew Kopp, who taps it in. But wait, Bruce Boudreau, eagle eye, once again, he's watching. He sees Pierre-Luc Dubois go into the crease a little bit hard, hey? He says, hey, ref, I want you to take another look at that. So they do. They go upstairs, and this is this is as clear-cut a goalie interference as you'll see, and it's like the bare minimum of what it will take for it to get overturned. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois coming across the crease, his right leg just clipped Demko and completely kept him from turning around, so the refs call it off. Bruce is 2-for-2 two two on challenges, and it's still 3-3 three, three in this game. Um, and uh, the Canucks survive the second period with a bit of a shaky, you know, second half of the period. But hey, they survive. It's 3-3. Three, three. We're all tied going in to the third period. The third period was all Canucks, to be honest. Uh, Canucks killed an early penalty that, that Hughes took. Uh, the Jets killed a penalty from Logan Stanley. Then the Canucks were all over the Jets here. We had Vasily Pod Colson firing one off the post. He had a really prime chance. Um, and then there was a scramble in front where Wheeler got hurt. And then Brad Hunt had a chance. He fires it off the bar. Uh, so two shots that could have gone in, could have changed the course of this game. Uh, and then we have Brock Besser with a minute to go, like 59 seconds on the clock, who fires one wide with a pretty prime chance. Uh, so we're 3-3. Three, three. Shots in the third period, 11 to 7. So they're basically even. I think they're 32 apiece at this point. And we go to overtime. And this overtime was exactly, if you wanted to sell three on three overtime, if you want to say, okay, well, why should we have three on three overtime in the game? This is one of those overtimes you say, watch this. Because there are nine shots in this five minutes of overtime, and it's absolute mayhem. We have a two on one that Tanner Pearson caused. Uh, Shout out Tanner Pearson. Uh, two on one for the Jets. Coming the other way, Tyler Myers. Excellent defensive play to block the pass. Then we have a three on two the other way. Brock Besser gets stopped. And then we have Pierre-Luc Dubois basically in all alone on Demko. He puts it wide. And then we have a Tyler Myers chance stopped. An Elias Pettersson chance that gets stopped. And this is all in the first two minutes. So Winnipeg takes a timeout. Quinn Hughes ends up ripping a shot wide, and then Winnipeg puts all the pressure on. We have Kyle Connor with a shot that's blocked. We have Josh Morrissey with a shot that's saved by Demko. We have Kyle Connor who has a shot on Demko. It sneaks through him, but he just got enough of it that it takes a different angle and goes off the post. This thing was labeled for the net, and Demko just got enough of it. It stays out. And then we have Nick Ehlers going on a breakaway, and that gets saved. That's all from the last time I mentioned the time when we were two two oh five into the period, well, now there's 50 seconds left. So that was all in about two minutes. 50 seconds to go. Uh, Nick Ehlers takes a penalty. He drags the leg on Elias Pettersson. Uh, Canucks take a timeout. They're going to drop this perfect play. And they do absolutely nothing for 50 seconds. They have a four on three in overtime. They don't take a shot until there's 10 seconds left on the clock. And it is a weak Quinn Hughes shot with no one in front. So we go to the shootout. And, uh, I mean, the best part of the shootout comes right off the bat. Elias Pettersson up first. Uh, he's struggled lately, right? We had the penalty shot against LA that he failed to score on. He put it wide. We had the shootout attempt uh, two nights ago uh, against, who was that? Was that Boston? Was that the Boston game? I'm kind of going crazy. Uh, against Boston, where he sort of flubbed the deke and it hopped over his stick. And then today, he says, you know, most people would have lost some confidence. Most people would be trying to simplify it, try a quick shot, try to find the opening. He says, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna channel my inner Peter Forsberg. I'm gonna go forehand and then and then do the one hand backhand and and he does it to perfection. It's beautiful. I can't wait to see the overhead view again. Uh Elias Pettersson just puts on the dangle show and it's one nothing Canucks. So Kyle Connor needs to or wants to score to tie it up. He tries to sell the backhand, does a little foot shifty thing. Demko doesn't bite. No chance. So it's stopped. Then we have JT Miller for the Canucks. He goes in slow. Uh, goes to the backhand last second, puts it off the post. 
I'm like, oh, and then I look up again. And I'm like, wait, it's going in as it had hit the goaltender and was creeping towards the line. It didn't have enough speed. It would have stopped. But Carmi reached back and swiped it away. So it's still one nothing. Then we have Mark Shifley wants to tie it. He takes a quick shot. Demko's not having any of it. Gets the blocker down, makes the stop. So Bo Horvat, a chance to win it, who went shelf just two nights ago, and he doesn't get enough of it. Keeps it low. It's stopped. Not enough on it. So now Pierre-Luc Dubois must score. He goes to the backhand. He's robbed. And the Vancouver Canucks have won three games in a row. Cheers to that, folks. Ah, my throat is still doing terrible. All right. Let's go into the pluses, the minuses for this game. We'll start with the pluses while we're riding high. Thatcher Demko. Sure. He gave up that one goal, that first Wheeler goal. Bad goal to give up, right? You, you don't want to give that up. But when Thatcher Demko needed to be absolutely clutch, the third period, uh, when the Jets had a few a few prime chances in the third period, nothing nothing got through him. In overtime, a couple of breakaways, the shot that got through him that just hit the post. Thatcher Demko was perfect, and then not to mention the shootout, of course. Thatcher Demko had a phenomenal game. I don't know what the stat is on it. He stopped 34 of 37, so a good game. Not a crazy game, like statistically. Uh, that is a 919. You'll take it. Uh, but you throw in the three shootout shots. That is five straight shots in the shootout that Thatcher Demko has said no to. And uh, the Canucks continue to ride high from that. Uh, my second plus is that they won. I mean, they, they just won the game. That is three straight wins for the first time this season. It's the first time this season that the Canucks had points in three straight games, let alone wins. Remember, this is a team that was like 8-15-2. And they've now won three straight, and they are 11, 15, and 2, which still isn't great, but it's trending up. It's a little less bleak than it was just a couple of days ago. So uh, we can uh, we can appreciate that. Where does that put the Canucks in the playoff race? Well, folks, they are six points behind Vegas. Vegas has two games in hand. Uh, and they are uh, eight points behind the Blues in the second wild card spot. Um, actually, no, the, the Golden Knights will be the second wild card spot, uh, which is 30, 32 points if they win one of their next two games. So there's still like six to eight points out of it. Still a ways to go. But hey, the Canucks are making up that little bit of ground, a little bit at a time. They just got to keep climbing, keep climbing. And as long as they keep this up, it's a team that looks like they can win on a given night, which is not the team we saw earlier this season. My third plus is Bruce Boudreaux being a challenge machine, two for two. Got the offside a couple nights ago. Gets the goaltender interference, which is a tough challenge to win, by the way. Goaltender interference challenges. I watched it and I was like, yeah, that's goalie interference. I don't think they overturn it. But they actually did this time, which is great because the Canucks didn't get a penalty from it. They weren't playing from behind. Uh, so got lucky there. Not really lucky. It's all skill for Bruce. But hey, it worked. Um, it was a fun game. That's a plus, right? This was a... Like the crowd was wild. The crowd was into it. It was just a fun, fun game, a fun way to start a weekend. The overtime was a big plus, like just so much action back and forth. It was stressful. I'm pacing back and forth back here. And uh, I want to give a big plus to Quinn Hughes tonight. Quinn Hughes was lights out. Uh, he His defensive play was really good. He was firing up stretch passes. He had an assist tonight. He was a plus two on the night. Uh, two shots, the most of any defenseman, uh, three hits. Uh, a good night for Quinn Hughes in 26 and a half minutes of ice time. Let's go to the minuses. The special teams battle was lost. Uh, Canucks go 0 for 2 on the power play, it says. But I think, yeah, 0 for 2. Uh, 0 for 2 on the power play. You include that overtime one. Uh, While well, the Jets went 1 for 3. Now, the Jets have the second worst penalty kill in the NHL. It's just barely behind the Canucks. Um, but, you know, the, the real issue there is you, you took three penalties and you only really drew one except for the one in overtime, right? Uh, you got to stay out of the box. You got to, you know, special teams have been what's killing the Canucks all year. The penalty kill didn't look as good tonight. It didn't look as aggressive uh, as forward. It looked like they were a little bit more on their heels a couple times. So didn't love that. Um, the Myers Pullman pairing, I thought was pretty rough tonight. Myers made up for it in overtime with that, uh, with that pass that he blocked, but I think they had a pretty rough go. Um, and especially Tucker Pullman. Pullman looks slow out there. 
like I saw a tweet. I don't remember who it was from, but he says it looks like it said, um, it looks like Pullman is at the end of a shift every time he steps on the ice. And I feel that he just doesn't, doesn't look that good out there. Um, Tanner Pearson, Tanner Pearson's, um, the love is starting to run out for Tanner Pearson here. Uh, I've, just bad giveaways. Um, f- just fanning on shots, not getting pucks to people. Uh, the overtime play where they're on a rush and you got to focus on keeping possession. He just like flubs a shot wide. Tanner Pearson is, is just, he's just got to get it sorted out. And I got to wonder if, if maybe his time is limited with Jim Rutherford coming in. Uh, Jim Rutherford loves to wheel and deal. So we'll see if that's something that happens. Um, and then my biggest minus here is the defense. The Canucks are without defense. Basically we have Oliver Ekman Larson who is out for a few days. He, you know, he didn't skate today. So he's a big piece that's gone. Uh, Travis Hamannick is on IR, so he can't play the next three games, including this one. So the next two games after this, um, they don't have Jack Rathbone to call up. He's not at hundred percent yet. Um, so when you have these pairings of like Burroughs and Hunt are, and then you got like Luke Shen out there and Tucker Pullman and Tyler Myers, like Quinn Hughes is your only like bona fide top four D man right now on the team, which is scary. Uh, but other than that, Hey, the Canucks won. The Canucks survived. The Canucks got two points out of this game. Uh, they've gotten, what's that? They won the two games before the one bad game. So in the last six games, they have won five of their last six, 10 points out of a possible 12. Uh, and it could be just the boost that this team needs. All right, let's go to your questions, your thoughts. Again, we're going to keep it kind of short because my throat is killing me uh, as I'm on the, the very tail end of this cold uh, as we hope to survive. I'm going to take a sip of water and then we will get to those. <sighs> okay, we're going to take the good questions here. Um... Jake saying, this is the PD we like to see. Pulling this off a few years ago, uh, but let's go, baby. Absolutely, Jake. Fully agree. Jeremy saying they're finding ways to win when they're, they were finding ways to lose before. Yeah, they're fighting through, right? You know, there was there was three times in this game where the Canucks had the lead and then they lost a lead, but they did not trail this entire game. And that's a big thing, right? You, you They kept the game in front of them. They didn't fall behind. They didn't give the Jets a chance to win. They just made it so the Jets had to work to not lose, if that makes sense. Um, let's take some some other stuff here. Let's see if we can find some longer ones. Uh, HSM Fangirl saying, green system was definitely the issue. It is starting to feel more and more like that every day. Zach saying, Hoaglander is turning out to be a phenomenal pickup. Yeah, he really slumped for a while, um, but he has looked very good in the last, uh, the last couple games. And tonight, I mean... Nothing to complain about, right? A beautiful first goal. The second goal, you just put pucks on net. Good things happen. Oh, and the reverse hit that Dan points out. Uh, that reverse hit was sick. Um, who's that on? Was that Morrissey that he just completely sent backwards? Loved it. Um, Lauren saying, any comments on the refs tonight? Um, yeah, they weren't great, but it wasn't the worst we've seen. Um... Victor saying, Bruce, there it is. Three straight, let's go. Demko's literally a top five goalie. He's, I don't know if he's top five, but he's up there. There's a lot of really good goalies out there. Um, but he's definitely up there, right? Oh, uh, let's see here. Marcus saying, aside from that abysmal pass, Myers played pretty well on D. Yeah, I think he played okay. I think, you know, you're, you're, you're tasking him with playing with Pullman, who has not looked good. Um, so he did fine. Uh, Ammerbeer saying, even if we lose, who cares? It's fun to watch some good hockey again. Preach to that. That is very true. Um, these last three hockey games have been a blast to watch. They've been exciting. The last two have been very tight, stressful, like that playoff feel. Uh, it's been very, very fun. Uh, BL tube saying, I complained about it earlier this year. But uh, or early of the season, but power plays should extend over time. I have been calling for this ever since that one game. I think it was against Buffalo where Pedersen made a sick move in front and then just got tripped because there was like 30 seconds left or whatever. So you might as well take a penalty because uh, it prevented a goal. I totally agree with that. I think if, you, if you're shorthanded in overtime, the overtime should not end until your penalty does because it totally incentivizes like last 30 seconds. Just do whatever you got to do to prevent a goal. Uh, cause whatever. Oh, a 30 second penalty kill. You're still more likely to, to make it to a shootout. Um, 
let's see here. Uh, Jay bringing up the receipts saying, I didn't, or didn't I tell you they would win the next three? Y'all laughed at me. Hey, I did because it seemed outlandish. If they, you know, they got the hurricanes on Sunday. That'll be a big game. That'll probably be a late post game. By the way, the next one will probably be an 11 PM on Sunday. Uh, I do have a hockey game that night, so I'll have to record it and watch it after. And then we'll do the show uh, about an hour uh, ahead of or an hour later than scheduled. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, lefty saying, hopefully the shootout goal for Patterson will turn it around for him. I do really hope so. Uh, the confidence is there, right? I mean, to, to go out and do that, you gotta, you gotta believe in yourself to pull that off. Uh, lots of talk about Pearson after I mentioned him. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, Gmod saying, does it even get to a shoot if we have Hamannick and OEL? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's probably less likely, right? Um, you know, they could have made a difference out there. I don't know if they're enough, you know, a full goal of difference, but maybe. Uh, Courteous C saying, can you imagine if Pearson actually did something? I mean, you're not wrong, right? Ugh. Um, Marcus saying is kind of hoping that Juleson would make his debut tonight. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I think Juleson might have to play. Uh, although they're not going to change the lineup. Let's be real, right? They're not going to change the lineup if they don't have to. They're hoping Rathbone will be healthy soon. <clears throat> so, uh, if they have Rathbone back, they'll be just fine. Um, uh, I'm going to just pick some of the longer ones. Um, uh, left field around saying Demko had a Vesna trophy game tonight. It was, I mean, he did let in that one bad goal, right? It wasn't great. Um, but Hey, you know, if, uh, I mean, he clutched up uh, when he needed to, uh, which was big. Um, Quattro, I'm giving a lot of heat to Tanner Pearson. Uh, Tanner Pearson had a terrible game, set up to shoot three or four times. He either whiffs or completely misses the puck. He fell in the transition. Why is this guy on the ice in OT? I don't have much to dispute here. Uh, I don't know why he is on the ice in OT. I think there's better options, right? Um, Pod Coles and Hoaglander, get them out there more. Um, obviously, Pedersen, Besser, Miller, right? They're already getting a lot of time. But, I mean, even like Dickinson, I'd rather have out there than Pearson at this point. Um, Aisha saying, is this hope that I'm feeling about the Canucks? Yeah. I mean, again, they're 11 and 15, but Hey, you know, they're, uh, they're looking better and better every game. Longest winning streak in the Pacific division. Um, I mean, nothing on the wild who are on an eight game winning streak, but Hey, um, you can only complain about the last couple of games and they've been doing really well. Lauren saying Garland continues to be a menace in the best way possible. Fully agree. Um, Connor Garland is just so good at hockey, uh, scoring again tonight. Uh, that third goal for the Canucks, uh, where again, he just beautiful move, uh, on Comrie, uh, and you love, love, love to see it. Um, uh, go Canuck Gus saying this game showed how important a goal in the dying seconds of a period can be. I think you meant to say Uh great job by Hoaglander with his two goals. Yeah. Goals late in periods are really important. Uh, and I mean, just from playing like house hockey, like beer league, you're like, Oh man, if you have a good period and then someone scores on you with like 20 seconds left, you're like, man, we worked so hard and they still got one late. Like it's so defeating. Uh, so it definitely can have a big mental impact. Oh, um, lefty saying that Quinn Hughes played a solid game. Fully agree. Joe Van saying thoughts on Patterson's play tonight. I thought he was meh again, but I mean, Hey, Came out when it mattered, right? Uh, pretty pretty empty on the score sheet. Only played 17 minutes tonight. Um, but, hey, he uh, he needed to score in the shootout, and he did. You uh, you can't complain with that. Uh, uh, Total Whiskey Family Boy saying, when the offense finds its gel, this season isn't a write-off on watching. Um, yeah, the fear is the defense, right? This team is going to have to outscore that defense, um, especially without OEL, without Hamannick. Because right now, that defense has a lot of holes. They're playing okay for now. But if we're talking, you know, five, ten games from now, you know, I can see the Canucks allowing three goals a game, like they did tonight, uh, and having to score four or five goals a night to uh, to win games, which is a little scary. Terry's saying, should I let them hurt me again? I'm doing it. Why not? Why not? 
Um, Aisha saying Myers is chaos as usual. Fully agree. Uh, Lefty all around saying, well, Rutherford does like to trade. And the way Pearson looked tonight, I don't think good first impression. Yeah, and he's traded him once before, right? We are who he got for uh, for the um, for Eric Branson. Goody. I saw someone comment. I don't know who it was. I don't know if you're watching. But they commented on my last uh, stream after the fact saying, um, you mentioned the good Branson for Pearson trade, but I think we'd rather have good Branson at this point based on the contract. But that's so irrelevant because I'm talking about the trade at the time. It was a great trade for the Canucks at the time. Uh, and then they extended Pearson for probably too much money. And then good Branson still had like three years left on that contract. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, maybe you do that trade backwards this time. Who knows? The Canucks need defense. I don't want good Branson back. Please no. Um, but they do need some defensemen for sure. Uh, they just need defensemen that are better than the glut of number six, seven defensemen they already have. Mango saying, I hope Jim trades Pearson for a bag of Doritos. Be a good deal. I would love some Doritos right now. Um, let's see here. Um, the elder saying Pearson's been bad since uh, Bruce Boudreau. The only guy since the change. Yeah, that might be true. He might be the only one who... Like, he might have had the the least improvement or most dis... What's the opposite of improvement? I, decline uh, of everyone. I, I think Pearson might be a contender for that, for sure. Um, Mark is saying Tanner Pearson for DeBrusque. Uh, do the Canucks even get DeBrusque for Tanner Pearson at this point? I mean, I know DeBrusque isn't great, but I mean... I don't know. I, I, I mean, the Boston... Uh, like, Don Sweeney's watching these games, too. Is Don Sweeney still their GM? Bruins GM. It is Don Sweeney. Yeah. Yeah, he's watching these games too, right? Like he can watch them too. Um, uh, Zach saying, how much do you think Hoaglander is going to get on his next contract? Is he an RFA this year or next year? Uh, they have him next year too. So I don't know. I mean, it, let's say he scores... 35 points this year, which is sort of his pace. And he was on like a 40 point pace last year. Um, I don't know if you have a guy who's putting up 40 points and he's an RFA. I mean, maybe like three, three and a half. Cause he doesn't have a lot of rights, right? Maybe a little more, maybe, maybe he gets four. The cap is going to go up in a couple years. So that could be, uh, that could be possible. Uh, lefty saying Burroughs and Hunt, minor leaguers, but their effort is 100%. Yeah, and especially Kyle Burroughs. I think he has really looked fine. Like, he has looked like a very serviceable NHL defenseman um, through the, whatever, however many games he's played this far, like 15 games or whatever. Uh, he's looked totally serviceable, and he's not making a bunch of big mistakes. <clears throat> Um, Chris saying, if we can replace Pearson, Myers, and Pullman with a top four D man, another Mott type and a Kyle Burroughs type, Rutherford will have worked miracles. Yeah, that doesn't, that's not going to really happen, right? Because I mean, you're kind of making, you're trying to, you're basically trying to make three improvements almost, um, like Myers to a top four D man. That's kind of an improvement. Pearson to a Tyler Mott type, maybe a slight downgrade. And then Pullman to Kyle Burroughs is kind of maybe a downgrade slightly, but the contract would be better. Um, yeah, I think it would be possible, but I mean, no one's trading top 40 men right now. Um, <laughs> oh no, not Pearson for good Branson again. I might've been joking. Maybe it would be funny though. Um, let's see here. Um, Leo saying, I honestly think firing Benning gave the place morale boost, betting damaged the relationship with the players. And it seemed like they never recovered. Yeah. And I don't know if it was him or if it was, um, I mean, yeah, we heard about that whole 2020 off season thing, uh, with, you know, not getting Edler or Tanev or Marky or Toffoli back. You know, these guys are friends, right? Um, but you know, I'm sure it, it definitely seems like Travis Green was a part of it too, uh, at this point as well. Uh, Josh was saying, start the parade to ninth place and miss, miss the playoffs by a point and mess up the draft positioning. But hey, I, I mean, this is kind of true, but also like, I'm so tired of losing. We the Canucks have the Canucks have been decently high in the draft for a while now. Um, I'm done with it at this point. I want some wins. Let's have some fun, 
Um, this could be a team that loses a lot of games 5-4 this year with the way their defense is, and they could still stay pretty low in the standings, right? The Canucks aren't out of it yet. They're they're seventh in the division. They they got ahead of Chicago today. Bravo, right? Uh, they also, do they get ahead of anyone else today? Oh, they got ahead of Philly today. Like, they're getting ahead of some bad teams uh, in draft positioning that they still could fall below if things go back, uh, things go bad. Uh, Sam saying hands down the most exciting OT in recent memory, but for Frack's sake, that OT power play was atrocious. Yeah, the Rangers one was pretty exciting, especially with the result of Miller scoring. Uh, but yeah, the power play was so bad. Uh, it was very, very useless. Uh, did not enjoy that all that much. Um, Dexter saying, what do we think about Lockwood coming up for chase on? I don't hate it. I don't know if Lockwood's ready, but I don't think chase on's ready either, to be honest. Mango saying, do you think the Canucks are a good team if they beat Carolina? I think they're a hot team if they beat Carolina. I think they might, they're a good team if they sustain it for the whole season, right? If they, if they win out like on like a hundred point pace for the rest of the season. Yeah, they're a good team. But if they beat Carolina, they've won four straight. They're a hot team. Not necessarily a good team yet. Let's give it a, a month or so before we go declaring if they're good or not. Kevin saying, who's the first player Rutherford moves out? Uh, it's, I mean, it could be Sutter. He's traded Sutter twice in the past. Um, although he's out with COVID. I don't know if that would be a very cool move. Uh, it could be Pearson, to be honest. Uh, Dale saying, what is with Paul Maurice frothing at the mouth? He's angry, hey? He was mad about that goalie interference getting overturned. Uh, he's just a mad guy. Uh, let's see. We'll take a couple more and then we're going to wrap up here. Because I need to rest my throat. Because I am sick, boy. <clears throat> Uh, Soviet saying Hughes is becoming really good defensively. He, if he keeps us going with his dynamic offensive game, he could be a Norris candidate in a couple years. Very, very true. And I mean, let's see. How many points does he have? He's got 22 points in 27 games. That was coming into this game, I think. Right? Yeah, can I just play 28 now? And he had another assist tonight. So he's got 23 and 28. I mean, hey, if the Canucks offense picks up like we've seen, then he could be at a point of game by the end of the season, right? He's gone from minus 24 last year to a plus six this year. Yeah, he could be a Norris candidate even this year. Like if the Canucks make the playoffs, he could be up there for sure. Reaction Club says, well, Bruce did say we have to win two or three every week uh, or two of three every week. We went three for three with this week. Absolutely. Um, that is a, a good start. Hey, Um where it gets tricky is they play four games next week. How does that work? They got to go two, one, and one. Is that the plan? Because winning two next week won't be good enough. Uh, Lauren saying planning to go any games in the uh, in December. Uh, once I'm healthier, maybe, maybe at the end of the month. But they don't play a lot at home at the end of the month, so probably not. Oh. All right, throat is getting very sore. Um, we will find a couple here. Brandon saying, do you think Demko got so good because he faces so many shots a night? I mean, hey, getting shots on goal helps. The Like, you know, practice is good. Practice is good. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, Chris Gear and John Wall real quick. Um, and then we're going to wrap up. Let me pull up my notes. So... Uh, cause I didn't make a video on it cause I didn't think it was really worth it, but, uh, Canucks let go of Chris gear and Jonathan wall today. Uh, rumors that it was Francesco that did it, but Chris gear, for those who don't know, has been in the organization for like 12 years was like league general counsel and like the vice president of the team. And then was the chief legal officer and COO and GM or AGM under Jim Benning for the last two years. So they let him go. And then Jonathan wall, who's like senior director of hockey ops and analytics, for the past seven years or six years and spent 20 years in the organization. Um, kind of surprising, but also kind of not right. If your philosophy is we're going to fully clean house, um, then I mean, that makes sense, right? You, we can't sort of 
pick and choose and be like, oh, well, I think Chris Gear was fine because he was like the contract guy. But I mean, the Canucks signed some bad contracts, right? The Canucks signed a lot of bad contracts. I don't know how involved he was in those, but, you know, uh, I think they're going to just want to get their own guys. And I, I think that is uh, totally fair uh, at this point. I'm going to cough again really quick. Okay. We're wrapping up. Losing my voice. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Melissa, bring me water, but I'm done anyways. Don't worry about it. Um, I will, uh, let's, let's give a quick shout out to our members as we wrap up here. We'll do, like I said, the Sunday show will be a little bit later at um, 11 o'clock because I have hockey that night. Uh, shout out Shannon, Terry, Kurt, our backstage members, and all of you VIPs out there as well. Uh, if you want to become a member, you can hit the join button down below. You get some emojis, some extra perks. Uh, I hope you guys have a good night. And I will, uh, I'll talk to you guys on Sunday.